it's about uh, the terrors of daycare, picking up your son, and problems you might have with your wife. <laughs> Kids need big, decrepit spaces for their parties and orgies <laughs> and suicidal Sunday afternoons. The buildings in Queens had been designed for only one thing, to house and disguise the fester of families. When I reached the daycare center, I was sweating, heaving. I could have used a nice vomit. I should join a gym, I thought, but then I just vomited in it. <laughs> Christine, the daycare runner's brother, sat in a canvas chair in the driveway. Nick had the build and the hair of a picture book giant, a merry bipolar glint in the eye. He worked occasional construction jobs and sometimes held down the daycare fort while Christine cruised the burrow in her minivan, picking up new children. Nick nodded, waved. A pink plastic rifle in his lap had leaked, wetting his tracksuit pants. Frantic children danced around him, screamed, struck Nick, Nick with lengths of garden hose. Nick raised his rifle, launching dark ropes of liquid at the mere brazen tykes. Gun me, said one kid. I'm poopy man, said another. <laughs> My son Bernie appeared to be absent from this frolic. Milo, said Nick, how you doing? I'm good, I said, ducking a late burst of crimson spray. I'm just uh, here for Bernie. No, I know. Have you seen him? What? Said Nick. Yeah, yeah, sure, but first, I was thinking, how'd you like to make some money? Nick lowered his rifle, looked over at the boys still cowering from his fusillade. Go play with those wooden scraps near the garage, he called. Uh, sure, I'd, I'd love to make some money, Nick. Uh, money's one of my favorite things to make, but I should, I should really find my son right now. Yeah, 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 no, go ahead, guy. Just that I got this deck job out at the end of the week, and my assistant crapped out on me. I need a helper. Deck job. Yeah, yeah, I build decks, you know, like off the back of a house. Got it. Interested? Uh, maybe, you know, but I'm pretty busy. Can I let you know? I'll let you know. There was a whiff of the volatile about this man that always put me in modes of deferment, of friendly deferral. Yeah, said Nick. Let me know. I will. I, I promise. I'll let you know. Good. It's a deal. What's a deal? You letting me know. Yeah, yeah, that's a deal. Have you seen my kid, Nick? Nick tilted his head, a new shine in his eyes. Yeah, your kid. Is he one of these homos? Um... He swiveled his chair, opened up once more on the boys while they crouched near the ruins of a doghouse. Soup's on, mother lovers! And when he shot at them, I realized now, it was some variant of a vitamin drink. The children squealed and dove into the splintered wood. Uh, no, Nick, uh, my son is n not one of these particular little homos, but uh, I jogged past him and I went into the staircase. The house was low ceiling, dark, and as I crept through the kitchen, I could almost have been, well, one of those Hollywood seals with a pistol in the hand, an avuncular sergeant in my earbud. I could have almost been one of those righteous manhunters that I'd portrayed in the cramped hallways of my boyhood, but I was not. I felt the dull sear of that notness now. More howls broke through the roar of a television as I turned into a carpeted parlor, slunk past a flimsy rack of cut glass bowls, china dolls, and other sad lady collectibles toward the light of a dusty bay window. I knew this room from the past pickups of Bernie, and now I felt an odd flutter in my gut. Bernie, my son, could be face down in the shag, choking on a cherry sucker from that quartz dish on Christina's coffee table. No longer this high-tech Avenger, I'd ended up a different character in the same Hollywood movie. The stunned father with the kid's limp corpse in his arms. The collateral damage cut away. But Bernie had not choked on a sucker. Bernie was not dead in the shag. Bernie was chewing on another boy's penis. The boy screamed as my son nodded his denim. Hunched before the giant TV where a prelapsarian New York Yankees highlight reel looped swank jetarian feats, the boys in their backlit shadow play agon jerked like Mrs. Cooley's beloved Balinese puppets. Daddy, shouted Bernie, lifting his head from the drool dark pants of his prey. Hey, little man, ready to go home? Bernie hopped up and did his little funny lope across the room. Say goodbye to Aiden, I said, recognizing the other boy now, the rabbit-eyed only of another Christine regular, a single mom who sold cell phones from a store on Dittmer's Avenue. Bye, said Bernie. Bye, called Aiden. I lifted Bernie into the crook of my arm, passed back through the kitchen, snacked our, snatched our crammed canvas supply bag, and stepped out the door. The children shivered in the grass, their hair and skin faintly iridescent. No longer the lawn chair hunter of children, Nick had taken a knee, a precarious pose for a man his size. He leaned on the rifle stock, and the bright barrel was wedged in his mouth. He bucked his head away and mimed the rifle's recoil in slow motion, and let the weapon clatter to the asphalt. Just like that, he told the kids. What are you doing, Nick? I'm telling the kids a story about my brother. <laughs> Do you think that's appropriate? What does that mean, appropriate? Is that a fancy word for having no balls? No, it's just, I know what it means. 
Okay, Nick, I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. You're not wrong to wonder what is he showing little kids how to eat a bullet, right? But this is not what it looks like. It's not? No, not completely. Oh. Our deal still stands. Uh, yeah. Okay. Come on, Barney. See you kids later. Bye. Nick turned back to his rap flock. I hoisted Barney on my shoulders, carried him across the street. Daddy? Yeah, Bern. Is Nick bad? No, I don't think he's bad. Is he sad? Well, maybe he's a little sad. Is he angry? Eh, he might be a little angry. I bit Aiden's winky and mashed his face. <laughs> yeah, Bern, I saw. Uh, why do you think you did that? I wanted to. <laughs> well, why do you think you wanted to? I didn't want him to have his train. Well, it was his train, right? Yeah. Did he share it with you? Yeah. So what's the problem? He had it. <laughs> okay, Bern, well, maybe you should have been happy that he was sharing with you, though. That was nice, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. So do you think it was right of you to bite and mash? Yes. Why? Because I wanted to, Daddy. You baffle me, Bern. <laughs> What's baffle? Is baffle like waffle? Uh, it sounds a little bit like waffle, but, uh, you know, you've got a good ear, son. Baffle means I don't know why you bit and mashed Aiden's pants. I told you why. I know you wanted to. Daddy? Yeah? What's depressive? Wait a minute. Who called you depressive, Nick? Nobody. Bernie, no, no, no. No, tell me. Who called you depressive? One of the older boys? And those poor kids. They gleaned these terms at, terms at random, overheard them from afternoon TV, dinner chat, or else the language of pathology was affixed to them by some shrink Mengele, either to stuff them with Ritalin and Zoloft. Wait a minute, who said you were depressive, Bernie? Tell me. Nobody, Daddy. Are you sure? You're the depressive, Daddy. Mommy said. <laughs> On the phone with Paul. Who's Paul? Paul from work. He's an artist, Daddy. Paul did design for my wife's firm. Some animation websites also featured his cartoons. I'd met him in Midtown once when I picked up Mara, my wife, for her birthday dinner. He seemed pleasant, if not a little bland, a tan, lanky guy who wore, you know, expensive vintage clothing. I kept waiting for Mara to tell me he was gay, right? She declared herself, you know, a devoted fag hag when she was in college when we started dating and said it might even interfere with her quest for heterosexual companionship. But she never said anything about Paul's preference, so I knew better not to ask. All right, yeah, Bernie, uh, Paul from work. Paul is going to make me a whole little movie of superheroes on his computer. That's what Mommy said. Are you a pansy, Daddy? Wait, did Mommy say depressive or pansy? What's a pansy? It's a flower, Bernie. I love flowers. I pick them for Mommy, but she gets mad because other people need to enjoy them. Yeah, that's right. Mommy's right. You're a nice pansy, Daddy. <laughs> Thanks, Bernie. You're welcome. I'm home. Bernie is asleep, or down, in the parlance of our suffering set. We cooked pork chops from the corner butcher. Mara patted the meat with a Cajun rub. I made the salad, stirred in the vinaigrette. This was our time, the sacred hour of our sacred institution. I sipped some sour Malbec that she had bought home from an office party and decided not to prod about Paul, and instead told Mara about Nick's offer, if only for the chance to launch some joke at the giant's expense and get my girl, my wife, my happy darling to cackle again. Maybe you should do it, said Mara. Are you serious? Well, this Purdy thing can, you know, at the college, can't take up your time. You think you're just kind of waiting around for something, aren't you, honey? He's been out of town. Okay, so maybe you can try going on the deck. I don't know. Work on the deck. You might enjoy the exercise. If I can handle it, it could kill me. If Nick can do it, you can do it. The guy's not exactly fit. Well, maybe I will. Fine. I mean, now I could be a carpenter, like Jesus. I felt flushed with the idea of Jesus, the Jewish craftsman Jesus. And also the shit wine. <laughs> what are you talking about, said Mara, who knew what I was talking about, had dabbled perhaps in a bit more coherence in the same college theory that I had, but it probably wanted me to focus more on how I'd salted the salad. I'm talking, honey, about our homeland, okay? That's what I'm talking about. America, that run-down, demented old pimp. Can't keep his bitches in line. No juice, lost his demented fangs. <laughs> Drinks tango from a paper bag. A gummy coot in the pool hall. The wolves, those juveniles. They taunt him. Gummy coot? <laughs> Whatever, I said. You get the point. <laughs> Not really. What's your problem? I don't have a problem. Is there something you want to say to me? Why was I such a diseased bastard? It had to be society's fault. I love people. All people. Except for the ones with money and time. Are you sure? Look, I know you think I'm homophobic, but I'm not. You're the one who betrayed all your friends by having a baby. Most of my gay friends have babies now. Well, you call them your gay friends. That's homophobic, right? You've lost me. I don't like animation. I like live action. 
honey, I need a little more time with that. Look, I don't care what people do behind closed doors or open doors or out in the street in coffee shops. I don't care what you do, honey. You know, you can give blowjobs at Starbucks all day. Just don't be happy. And don't call me a depressive pansy behind my back. My wife stared at me. I'm just kidding. <laughs>